What did I just watch? What did I just watch? What would happen? I pose the question. What would happen if Yoko Taro wrote Future Diaries and a not terrible CGI company headed the animation of it? That's pretty much what you get with God App <laughs> or Kami Arabi God App. This series is honestly one that the only reason I was looking forward to it was because Yoko Taro was involved. He's the original creator of it. We have Jin, who did Listeners, is doing the series composition and the script work for it. And again, yes, this random studio, Unend, has popped up out of nowhere and pretty much done the animation for it. We also got music from uh, Monica, who did music for Nier and Yuki Yuna as a hero. So it's got a good team behind it, just not a great studio. And yes, a lot of arguments can be made for this series having a very generic concept behind it, which is essentially a bunch of kids that get chosen to fight over who becomes the next god. Now, I say all that with this caveat. I'm intrigued by the show. Yes, one is because it does something within the first episode that is <laughs> raunchy as hell. <laughs> and I, just, I had to double take it because I'm like, wait, that, did that just happen? But additionally, the fact that there is sort of a, a gimmick to the main character's ability, which again is another aspect of, yes, all of these games have that. They all have the main character has some sort of gimmick behind their power, or they just use their smarts to get through situations. Um, but I'm interested in it. And honestly, I can say, visually it doesn't look bad. As much as, yes, a lot of anti-CGI people, which I'm not really in that camp, are going to immediately vomit and turn it off, which... Good on you. I, I don't expect people to stomach CGI. I've, I've learned at some point that it's just inevitability and to get used to it. <laughs> and so when I started with things like Nicedonia and stuff, I just kind of stuck with it. But let's let's jump into what is Kami Sama or Kami Arabi God app. It essentially opens up with this guy narrating the fact that, yeah, this is his story. It's a really screwed up, stupid story. Uh, it's a sickening story about how he became a god. And it jumps back in time to the point where, apparently, he was selected for this game. Which it opens up with him going to school. He ends up bumping into this guy on the roof. The guy asks him to take a, a video of him, not knowing what he's going to actually do. And his friend just jumps off the side of the building. Well, he actually lands on a ledge, just on the front side of the building itself, so he doesn't die. But he's really mad about it. We find out that uh, Goro Ono, this main character, really likes this one idol. He also has a crush on this girl Hanukkah Sawa in his school. Apparently she's got a boyfriend. At some point, Sawa shows up and says, Hey, hey, oh no, you're good with these social media apps, right? Can you help me with figuring out how to upload this picture? And so he helps her. He then goes ahead home, ends up picking up some medication from a hospital, which apparently is some sort of psychotropics or something like that. Something for depression or something. We're not quite sure exactly what he's taking. He gets home. His mother's like, did you get your pills? Because I don't want another episode again. He goes back up to his room and goes to go to bed before his phone pops up with this app. And he's not sure how to get past the app, but he, he assumes it's a spam. And it's saying, you've been chosen. What is your wish? And he's like, whatever. Um, sure. I, I want to do something etchy with Sawa. Which, again, is his classmate that he has a crush on. Well, some weird creature comes out of it, and then he passes out, and he wakes up the next day, goes to school. Come to find out, yes, apparently when he was showing Sawa how to use the app and how to upload media, he uploaded the video of his friend jumping off the side of the building, saying it's footage of somebody jumping off the side of a building. It gets him suspended for a week, and as he's walking home, Sawa shows up and says, I'm sorry, this happened because of me, right? Well, Ono's friend kind of talks her into, you know, yeah, my friend's really upset now, can you take care of him? And then so she decides to go with him to an arcade. So now we have Ono alone with this girl that has, has a crush on at an arcade. And they decide to play a game and when they turn on the TV, there's <laughs> prawn on the TV. <laughs> to which Sawa quickly goes over and goes to pull down his pants. And it jumps to basically seemingly him being forced. It kind of implies that he's being forced to act out something. Which is yes, um rubbing down there and she's watching the whole time <laughs> and as he reaches this point of happiness this being that he's seen the night before this little fairy thing pops out and says congratulations your wish has come true yes by him pants down and everything in front of this girl that fulfilled his wish of doing something etchy with her and now he's a part of this big game to see who will be the next god 
This little fairy that we later on find out is Lull, apparently has the power to twist karma. And as Ono is running away because he just did something really inappropriate in front of this girl and this fairy's flying around his face, he thinks he's hallucinating, he's going to go to the hospital, the hospital's gone. Lol, the little fairy, claims that this is the world being twisted. That sometimes this can happen during these competitions. You can twist the reality of the world. And so the hospital that he always goes to is just now a construction site. On top of that, as he's trying to get back home, Sawa shows up out of nowhere and says, hey, <laughs> oh no, why'd you run away? That was kind of weird. And then she tries to kill him. She has this little dagger and it cuts through the air, cuts this pillar down that falls on some random guy on the side of the road, kills him. She stabs the corpse twists it and it turns into this big blade and she starts to chase down Ono to kill him. She claims that she's shocked that he's another one of the candidates, but yeah, she's gonna kill him. And the entire time he's playing with her, like, you know, look, they tried to get me to fight too. We don't have to fight, let's not fight. And she says, nobody talked me into fighting. I'm doing this because I want to. I want to be God and own everything. And as Ono is kind of being pushed in the corner and pushed in the corner, eventually he's pretty much like, why won't somebody come save me? I don't want this. I don't want to have anything to do with this. And this Lal, the fairy that's supposed to be helping him just basically says, fine then, if you want to die, go ahead. Things like this happen all the time. And the current God doesn't stop it. It's happening to people left and right, murder, suicide, all this kind of stuff. And you just never notice it. Now it's just your turn. So you can get hit or you can hit back. The cat was sort of a sign of that, that something terrible is gonna happen to this cat and he even himself didn't do anything. And there's a good chance that his decision not to help the cat is the reason why he was chosen because the current God also seems to turn a blind eye to it. So Ono decides, fine then, what can I do to stop Sawa? I don't wanna die, what can I do to stop Sawa? And Lal basically tells him, a miracle. So Ono finally activates his power, which apparently is this full sutra. And what the power ends up doing is creating a happening essentially is what I'm gathering. He creates the happening that for some reason, a debris from a satellite comes plummeting down from space and slams right into Sawa, killing her. So Ono's safe. He's not going to die, but obviously he's not too happy because he just killed this girl that he had a crush on. And that's not really cool. So he whispers to Lal something that we don't really get to hear, but essentially what I'm gathering from what happens in the next scene is that he pretty much asks Lal, is there some way for me to save Sawa? Yes, she's dead, but is there something I can do to save her? And Lal says, I won't stop you. It's your decision. We cut to the after scene and everything around him and his home seems to be like crap. And he goes to school and ends up bumping into Sawa again. So she lived, even though she's supposed to die. So my thoughts on Kami Arabi God app. Let's let's get the visuals out of the way. I'm mixed. It's not my favorite style of CGI, but at the same time, they're doing a really good job of this. It, the character designs look pretty good. Some of them are kind of eh, but for the most part, I I do like the character designs. I think the animation's okay. The action scenes were a lot better done than I thought. There's a, there's a good style to it whenever they want to kind of ramp things up. And they're doing a pretty good job of kind of presenting Yes, not the greatest looking CGI. But again, it's kind of serviceable. Like it does enough that I'm not bothered by it. And I've seen some pretty bad CGI out there. My only major misgiving is that when it comes to the combat sequence, the whole fight between Ono and Sawa, it seemed like they were trying to get very creative with the visuals in order to kind of make it look more impactful, look like things are really getting crazy. And one of their choices in this situation in order to make it seem like it's impactful is to constantly mess with the focus. Like constantly, it was like a pulsing that was happening as it kept going to blurry and fuzzy over and over and over again. And it was so freaking agitating. So <laughs> that's my only misgiving. And, it, and that sucks because that means probably for the rest of the show, it's gonna be that way. And it's gonna drive me nuts. I hate whatever style choice that was. There's also a lot of transitions and movement of characters that seems like it's just kind of trying its hardest to make it seem like it's moving faster than it is. And it kind of looks a little upsetting. But other than that, I liked a lot of the visual design they did. Like when Sawa's walking up and it almost looks like it's going into another existence. It kind of does this whole thing where it almost looks like the world itself is being engulfed by some sort of charring or something like that. So they got a lot of cool little creative designs they have in there to kind of, again, overlay the fact that it is CGI. Music's fantastic. I, I really do like uh, Monica's work. They, did, again, did Yuki Yun as a hero, uh, Nier. Some really creative music and, yes, kind of has a little bit of a, a trance in there as well, which I do really appreciate. But getting into the story, let, let's get into the meat and potatoes. What it What are my thoughts on this first episode of God App? Honestly, I... 
Yes, for the most part, the first beginning segment is just kind of a setup to get to know the character and his misgivings, that he has problems at home, that he has issues with something medical. And it all kind of ties into several kind of happenings that I'm I'm considering is probably all a part of a bigger picture. And explain that I have to hit on one major key point here. Ono's ability has something to do with karma. Lal has the, has the power of karma. And it seems like a lot of things that are happening around Ono have something that can be tied to karma. He takes this video of his friend and sure enough, the next day it's posted. Now I don't believe that this was an accident while he was showing Sawa how to do this. You don't just go, okay, let me show you how to convert this video so that you can post it on social media, but hold on, let me type in what I want for the title, which is watch this guy jump off the side of the building. There was so much thought put into how the post was made that I don't think it was simply because he was walking her through the process. I think karma hit him there. The idea that he needs medical care and the hospital's gone, which could probably be tied into the idea that he doesn't like the fact that he has to go to the hospital and get these medications, and that might be a reason why it disappeared. The fact that his mother ends up becoming an alcoholic. The fact that everybody calls him Mr. Dangle or something like that, which assumes that he probably, probably him in front of Sawa at the arcade was possibly posted somewhere. He's now known as a pervert. There's all these things that are coming down on Ano which seems to imply this idea of a negative karma effect. My assumption for Sawa is that she probably has the ability to, I don't know, manipulate flesh into power, which is why she has to stab this guy and turn it into something. And additionally, later on, stabbing into raw meat and creating flesh from that. So it seems like already they have some creative uses of powers themselves that the characters are gonna be using against each other. My assumption based on one of the synopsis I've seen a while back is that there's a possibility that everybody involved in this, this candidate system has something that's twisted in their mind, something perverted about them. Maybe there's a possibility that Sawa herself has some sort of fetish that plays into her creating weapons from flesh. I mean, there could be a tie-in with the powers to the individual characters regarding their state of mind. I mean, my assumption is that Akatsu, the guy that jumped off the side of the building, is possibly gonna be wrapped up in the game itself. And it seemed to give a lot of indication early on that he's willing to jump off of a building. Like he doesn't necessarily follow through with it, but it seems like it's something that he's interested in. Ono can technically be tied to karma because yes, the fact of him having that posted online could be bad karma for him, which would make you wonder what's going on with Sawa and why she would stab raw meat in order to create weapons. It doesn't seem like she has any care whatsoever for life because yes, a guy gets pummeled by the pole when she cuts it and she goes over there and stabs it. No repercussions or anything regarding that, by the way. So that could possibly be a major plot point for the series is just what the characters are going through, what kind of state of mind they're going through, what kind of things they're dealing with. Could be a tie-in with their abilities, why they were selected, and yes, their ultimate fights. But I think the most creative aspect of the whole karma system and the power of Ono himself was really around the idea that when he finally defeats Sawa, and this is probably the, the, the major hook that has me kind of intrigued to go forward, when he defeats Sawa, like I said, he whispers something to Lal, Lal kind of accepts what he says, and then we cut to the next day, and suddenly it seems like things are crappy for Ono. Which again, like I mentioned earlier, is the mother suddenly a drunkard? She was, looked like she was a stockbroker, like she was doing day trading, and then out of nowhere, she's suddenly a drunk and she's throwing bottles at him. Yes, it seemed like she wasn't the nicest parent, but at least she had a job and she was focused on it. And then like I said, him going outside and seeing Mr. Dangle, kind of assumes that, yes, Ono, the only thing I can think of for dangling is what he was doing in front of Sawa, which makes me believe that somebody got footage of that and posted it up. So my assumption is what he asked Lal is if there's a way that I can essentially save her life, and that way was to bring a bunch of karma upon himself. There was a, he used karma to defeat Sawa, and so the only way to undo her being defeated is to draw that karma to himself. And so he pulls all this horrible stuff to him, and saves her life. He's now seen as a pervert. Everybody seems to hate their family. His mother's a drunk, but Sawa is alive. And I'll be curious to see if Sawa knows that, if Sawa comes back or if she's gonna start attacking him again, or possibly she knows that he saved her life. And honestly, I'm of two different minds here. On one end, I don't like shows that have high stakes. People are gonna die. This is a death game, but then nobody dies. But at least it seems like there is a punishment for the idea of him saving a life. He's gonna pull all this horrible stuff upon himself to create miracles like Lal was saying. I do have to admit though, I, I, <laughs> I, think, I think there is a horrible idea behind, because typically, yes, mostly with these types of shows, Magical Girl shows, Madoka, death games, all these types of things that have like a wish at the beginning of it, 
it's always like yes in most cases a lot of a lot of the characters end up choosing something stupid let's see that's a, that's a trope let's be perfectly honest a lot of a lot of death games start with a stupid wish because they don't believe it's actually real but doing something etchy with sawa and it just turns out to be him in front of her <laughs> yanking the chain was a little bit um I feel a little bad for the guy, but at the same time, it would be a little difficult to to accept a main character that just literally forced himself upon him. When I read the synopsis, they kind of implied something like this was going to happen. Like, she literally pulls his pants down, and then it says, congratulations, something good happened. Um, <laughs> and I thought what was ha going to happen is that he did technically get to do something with Sawa, and that was the reason why she wanted to kill him. But no, it seems to imply afterwards that she didn't even know that he was a candidate, but it does imply that yes, technically the reason why she came to him probably was, and the reason why that was on the TV was because they were trying to push the laws of physics to make them to have something happen between each other. But so far, it's all kind of playing out well. I, d I don't usually get too interested in death games like Five uh, Battle in Five Seconds, uh, Darwin's Game. Darwin's game was okay. Um, King's game was terrible. There's a lot of really bad uh, death game types of shows. A lot of shows that are trying to kind of pick up on literally the massive success that uh, Feature Diaries was. But again, I don't really usually find these too interesting. But honestly, after this first episode, I'm, I'm intrigued. I, I think it's doing a really good job of kind of playing out each scene and having some sort of things that you can pick up on that does technically kind of play into the overall story and the power that Ono has. Like I said, the whole karma aspect. And I'll be curious to see what other abilities the other characters have and again, how they can sort of manipulate the world they're in. But anyways, that's that's my thoughts on Yoko Taro's Feature Diaries. I hope you guys enjoy this video as always. Always, if you did, make sure that like button down below. Comment. Let me know what's the of the episode. If you're going to be checking it out. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure to that subscribe button to so get my content. I do news reviews, first impressions, top list. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. I'll be doing first impressions of all the shows of the season. So if you want to get an idea if it's something worth checking out, definitely stick around. Additionally, if you like this content and you want to support the channel more, I have a Patreon link, tips, link, super thanks, membership button down below. Greatly appreciate everybody does. And y'all take care.